Boaters are like a big family that share a special commonality. We're quick to help each other, asking nothing in return. Whether you fish, ski, tube, kayak, cliff jump, or just float, there is a common bond. So many of us have done the same thing, unofficially baptize our children in the water, teach them from early on how to have fun safely, and watch them grow up to become the next generation of boaters. When the lake calls, and we must go, we check our favorite weather apps. We air up our tires. Remember to put the plug in. Hook up to our trucks. And head down that road. When the ramp was narrowed to one lane between the K-rails, launching slowed, and it slowed even more when the pipe mat broke at the end of the concrete, and the drop-off made launching even more difficult and caused damage to many trailers. When the lines were long, we waited patiently we made sure that all boats got on the water and at the end of the day that we all got out so that we could get up and do it all over again the next day. Pipe mats are repurposed steel cooling pipes recycled from decommissioned coal-fired power plants that can be used to temporarily extend concrete launch ramps. The Park Service temporarily closed the ramp for repairs. In the early days, as the water would lower, they would build forms and poured wet concrete to keep extending the ramp. Eventually, the local concrete supplier closed and concrete trucks were driving about two hours to reach South Cove. The pipe mat was continually being moved. A perfect solution was to precast smaller concrete slabs in a factory, deliver them to the ramp by truck, and set them in place like interlocking tiles. These precast slabs were being installed as a part of the repair process to extend the ramp when the unthinkable happened. A tractor working at the water's edge where the ground was soft was unable to back up quickly enough and went off a ledge and submerged into the lake. In the blink of an eye, it was gone. 
shocked onlookers began to run down the ramp in fear. But within a few seconds, the driver's head popped up and he swam to shore. Thank God he was safe. The ramp never reopened after that. At first, the Park Service put up cones and the plastic ribbons do not cross. Eventually, the Park Service used the concrete slabs as a barrier to prevent people from driving down. It was difficult getting shots from so far away. I was able to find some different vantage points and set up my camera and tripod and tried to get the best shots that I could. So I would camp out in my Jeep day after day with my bug spray and my air conditioning because I thought this historic event deserved to be memorialized. At first, the tractor had caught on underwater cables and was just at the end of the dock, but it eventually worked its way loose and rolled further into the lake. Divers found it 80 feet deep and marked it with a red buoy. It turned out to be the deepest recovery in Lake Mead in 30 years. I had heard some big loaders were coming down to help pull the lost tractor out of the lake. But from my far away vantage point, they didn't look very big, but they were very big. Two Caterpillar 988 loaders with steel cables attached were used to pull the tractor out of the lake.